Pepsodent. Invite you to have a date with Judy. Well, let's see. It's early evening in the foster home, and Father, Judy, and Randolph are waiting anxiously for the phone to ring. That's it. That's Mother. Judy, hurry up. Father says long distance call through. I'll be right there. Hello, Dora. Hello. Melvin? Well, now, who else would be calling you long distance? What did you say, dear? I said who else would be calling you long distance? Well, how's everything in Springfield? How's Grandma? Just fine. She wants me to stay another week. Well, now, don't stay too long. I I miss your cooking. What? I said I miss your cooking. You don't need to rub it in, Father. How's Judy and Randolph? Uh, Just a minute. I'd like to talk to them. Here, here, Judy. Talk to your mother. Hello, Mother. Hello, Judy. How are you, dear? Just fine, Mother. Just a minute. I'll let you talk to Randolph. Hello, Mother. Hello, Randolph. How are you, dear? Just fine. Just a minute. I'll let you talk to Father again. Uh, hello, Dora. How are you, dear? We're just fine, Dora. Isn't it amazing? Every one of us is just fine. Melvin, Grandma wants to say a few words. All right. Hello, Melvin. Hello, Grandma. How are you feeling? I can't hear you. I, I said, how are you feeling? Well, I don't know what you said, but this sounds good. How are you feeling? Uh... <laughs> Who, me? Oh, I'm feeling fine. Well, I... I don't want to take up any more time. After all, this is a long-distance call, and Aunt Lily wants to say a few words. Hold the line. Uh, what was that? I said, hold the line. Yeah. Here's Lily. Hello, Melvin. Uh, hello, Lily. How are you? I'm fine, but I know this is costing money, so I'm going to let Uncle Pete say a few words. Hello, Melvin. How are you? Uh, great, Pete. Great. Now, how's business? Well, I tell you, but after all, this is a long-distance call, and I don't want to take up too much time. Besides, Dora's dying to talk to you again. All right. Hello, Melvin. Hello, Dora. This is a fascinating conversation. Well, I suppose I'd better hang up now. After all, this is a long-distance call. But we haven't been talking three minutes yet. Uh, what did you say, dear? I said we haven't been talking three minutes yet. Look out, Father. You'll spend three minutes telling her you haven't been talking three minutes. Anyhow, there's something I want to tell you, Dora. You know the old Reynolds house on Maple Street? Oh, yes. The one with the lovely old lawn. Yes. Well, well I got it on a trade. On what, dear? A trade. I bought a lot for the factory expansion, and I got the house on trade. Well, what are you going to do with it? Well, I thought we might uh, live in it. Will we really, Father? Oh, Melvin, that's wonderful. Well, we'll talk about it when you get home. All right, dear. Well, this is a long-distance call, so goodbye, dear, and kiss the children for me. All right, Dora, goodbye. Are we really going to move, Father? Oh, why not? It's a good house. Well, children, now that I've talked to your mother, I'm going to bed. Now, don't you stay up too late. Gee, that's super. Maple Street. Good night. Good night, Father. Good night. Randolph, I have the most luxurious idea. Wouldn't it be wonderful if Mother could arrive home and find herself just entirely moved? Well, who's going to do it, the little brownies? On account of if you're counting on me. I am counting on you, Randolph. We've been living off Mother and Father long enough without taking any responsibility. I'm satisfied. Randolph, we won't say a word to anyone. Not even Father. You know what we're going to do? I hate to say. We're going to start moving tomorrow. Yes, things are beginning to move in tonight's date with Judy. Chaperone by Pepsodent. And we'll find out which way they're moving in a moment. You know, it's surprising how many people go around with dingy teeth. Not because they can't help it, just because they don't know it. If they'd only make the tongue test, they'd find out quick. Try it yourself right now. Run the tip of your tongue over your teeth. Do you feel a filmy coating? Then switch to Pepsodent tonight. Pepsodent removes that filmy coating you can feel with your tongue. Flushes it away, dingy stains and all. Polishes your teeth to a beautiful, shining brilliance. Make the tongue test again after using Pepsodent, and your teeth feel shiny, smooth to your tongue. They feel clean, they look clean, they are clean. Get a tube of Pepsodent toothpaste tonight and see how much better you look when your teeth shine and your smile is sparkling. And now, let's get back to that date with Judy. I guess this is the house, Randolph. It's empty. This big hunk of masonry? Isn't it luxurious? It's practically a mansion. Well, let's take down the four sale sign and go in. I'm positively panning to see the inside. 
Nice is big. Foster found this little positively puny living in this big dump. How will we get in? Well, the door's locked. Oh, it looks all marbly and everything inside. Like a palace almost. Stand back, Princess. I'll try a window. Oh, that was easy. Let's climb in. It's kind of gloomy. Hey, a marble staircase. Gosh, I never expected to see the day I'd live in a house with a marble staircase. Judy, look, I'm here in the entrance. What'd you find, Randolph? A fish pond, a fish pond right smack inside of the house. And a fountain right smack inside of the fish pond. Oh, Randolph, it's too terribly elegant. Well, one thing, we'll never be lonesome with a bunch of fish living here with us. Of course, the house needs a lot of work. And the pond needs a lot of fish. We'll have to do something about these floors and walls. Ourselves, personally? Of course. We'll save Father all the expense we can. He won't have to pay for a single thing, except wallpaper and paste and paint and brushes. New floors and walls will put life into this house. You know what else will put life into this house? What? Fish. Young man, you've been looking at the goldfish for the last half hour. Have you made up your mind yet? Well, this is a difficult purchase. You know, it isn't every fish you can live with. How about goldfish? People have been living with them for years. No, I think you get kind of tired of goldfishing time. I had some once in a bowl, and I got tired of them the first time I had to change the water. <laughs> have you got any cleaner fish than goldfish? Well, the swordfish have nice habits. Well, they're rather large for our house. What about pollywogs? Well, they're rather small. What do you think of speckled trout? I think they're quite speckled. Well, I wish you'd make up your mind. You're the toughest customer I ever had. Hello, Randolph. Did you buy the fish yet? Why should he hurry? What else have I got to do today but wait on him? As a matter of fact, I'm torn between speckled trout and guppies. Oh, I think guppies are adorable. I think we ought to take them. Well, you know, on a pinch, you can eat a trout. Oh, I wouldn't eat a fish on you personally. Well, okay, mister. I'll take two dozen guppies. Wrap them up. It would be a pleasure. Well, that's over. Now all we have to do is hang the wallpaper and paint the floors. That shouldn't take us any time at all. Oh, Randolph, I'm so tired of painting. I've been doing it for a solid half hour, and all I've got painted is the upstairs. Oh, that's not bad, Judy. It took Michelangelo years just to paint the ceiling. I think I'll stop painting for a while and walk a bit. Knocking off a room or two every ten minutes. Well, I don't poke around like you. My goodness, it's taken you the whole half hour just to wallpaper the dining room. <laughs> yes, but it's neat. What happened to the fireplace? Well, I thought I'd take the course of easiest resistance. Meaning what? Well, I tapered over it. <laughs> sort of ran into difficulties tapering around it. I thought it'd be easier to cut the paper off later when we need the fireplace. We have to wait till winter to see that beautiful fireplace? Oh, I'll cut it out someday when I have some spare time. Hello, folks. Oh, hello. Who are you? I'm the gas man. I come to turn on the gas. Oh, Randolph, guess what? We're going to have gas. Well, isn't that just dandy? I've been all over the back of the house, and so far I ain't been able to find the gas meter. Oh, I'm sure it must be around someplace. Yeah, it usually is. I wish some of the other people had come. Have you seen any of your co-workers, mister? Like the water man and the electricity man and the telephone man? No, ma'am. We usually go our separate ways. Well, I wish they'd come. My goodness, I sent for them early this morning. Is that so? Yeah, my sister is especially anxious for the water man to come. <laughs> they're in a little pail of water and they're just dying to get in the pond. That's too bad. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and... With the wallpaper. I think I'll start in the wall hall here. Yeah. Oh, aren't you going to take the cobwebs off the wall first? Why, no. The wallpaper will cover them anyhow. <laughs> I guess you got something there. Oh, good. This taste is awfully good. Could I help you, lady? Well, you could hold this bell while I stand up on it to hang the wallpaper. It's a pleasure. Thanks very much. See, this is kind of fun. I always did like tasting these together ever since I was a little girl and made paper dolls. You've got that paper a little crooked there, lady. Oh, I don't think it makes a lot of difference. Randolph, look. While I stand up on this bell and take the paper up on the upper part of the wall, you stand below me and take it the rest of the way down. It's a deal. You're a little crooked again, lady. The critic says you're a little crooked again, Judy. Oh, just a very little. 
Well, I want this to be perfect. Well, we'll do our level best to please you. I just love to dabble around in paste. Mister, whatever got you started on the career of a gas man? I don't know. I went out one day looking for a job, and when I came home that night, I was a gas man. And that's what I've been doing ever since. Well, I'm going to get off the barrel. I want to stand back and see what this looks like. Hold out your hand, mister, while I jump. It's a pleasure. Mm. Well, it doesn't look so bad. Except for one thing. That big lump down at the bottom. You're darn right. I'm the lump. <laughs> well, Jeepers, how did you get under the paper? I know just how the cobwebs must feel under there. Trapped. Oh, goopers. This is a mess. I'm very discouraged. I think I may know the way out of this darkness. I read a book once, Tom Sawyer by M. Twain. There was a very similar situation. What happened? Well, he was painting a fence, and it gave him a pain in the epiglottis. But did he let on it was a pain in the epiglottis? No. He pretended it was a veritable circus. And you know what happened? No. Everybody else wanted to do it for him. Honest? Yep. Now, Judy, if you'll be so good as to wipe a little paste off my second best suit, I'll go out in the world and come back with a whole army of willing workers. You know, that kid's got a good thinker on him. <laughs> Shirley, don't come in here. The paint isn't dry. Kitchen's all papered, Randolph. Oh, fine, Hilbert. One kitchen paper. Check. And Mitzi wanted me to tell you that she's nearly finished painting the dining room floor. One dining room floor, slightly painted. Check. She can't get in to report personally. She's painted all around her, so. Oh. She's marooned in the middle of the floor. Oh, hiya, Judy. This is darling of you kids. Isn't it wonderful of them, Randolph? Oh, think nothing of it. Why don't you help them, Randolph? I'm supervising. Come to think of it, why don't you help them? I'm busy encouraging them. Hey, look. Guppies in this fish pond. Yeah, they're all settled. And they seem very happy in their new home. Well, if I'm going to be happy in my new home, the telephone man had better get here. Bear up, child. The phone's in. Look, folks, I'm in a desperate position. I've been all over this house with a fine-tooth comb, and I still can't find the gas meter. Oh, how terrible. Gee, Randolph, I wonder if you could have wallpapered over it. Oh, not me. I wouldn't do anything like that. Listen. Listen, everybody. Huh? Stop painting and papering. We've got to take time off and help the gas man find the gas meter. Oh, a treasure hunt? Hilbert, that's a wonderful idea. And whoever finds the gas meter wins a prize. Well, what's the prize? Whoever finds it first gets to shellac the kitchen linoleum. Oh, well, don't worry. We'll find it if we have to tear the house apart. You're doing okay now. <laughs> Hey, come on, you kids. Let's go, huh? Strange thing, mob psychology. I wonder who that is. You the lady of the house? Well, in a way, yes. Then sign here. What? Sign here. She makes it a point never to sign anything without reading it first. Listen, this ain't the only load of furniture I've got to deliver today. Sign here. Well, okay. That'll be $23.40. How much? You heard me. $23.40. bucks and 40 cents. Hurry up and get it from your mall so we can start unloading this stuff. Well, I doubt very much if we have 23 bucks and 40 cents. Can't you just charge it to Melvin Foster? Sorry, bud. We do strictly a cash-on-the-line business. Oh, Randolph, I guess we'll have to call Father after all. Gene, I did want it to be a surprise about us moving. Oh, he'll still find a few things to be surprised about. <laughs> Wait till he sees this house. Well, anyhow, this will give me a chance to try out the new phone. There's all that money just for moving a little furniture. Silly. Mr. Foster's office. Hello, Miss Perkins. Is Father there? He's not in, Judy. He's at the railroad station. What's he doing there? Oh, I thought you knew. Your mother and grandmother are arriving on the 5.30 train. Oh, no. That can't be. He got a wire. Oh, Coopers. Goodbye. Good news, no doubt. Randolph. Mother's back. I don't believe it. She got in on the 5.30 train, and Grandma's coming with her. It's almost 5.30 now. You got my money? Well, no, my father's not in his office. No money, no furniture. Goodbye. Hey, where are you going? When you get the dough, let me know. Gee, there goes the furniture. What'll we do now? Do you think he'd take a down payment? Maybe. Well, I know where there's five bucks. Wonderful. Well, let's go back to the old house and get it. All right. Hey, whoa. On second thought, there's a slight complication. What? 
The moving company's already got my five bucks. It's in the top drawer of my dresser. We'll be back with Judy in just a moment. You know, I've noticed at every party, there's always one girl who has a group of admiring men around her. And she doesn't use hypnotism either. She may not be beautiful, but there's one thing she's sure to have, and that's an engaging smile. The Pepsodent kind of smile that flashes out from shiny, sparkling teeth. Everybody likes to look at teeth that sparkle and shine, but dingy teeth make people look the other way. You may have dingy teeth without realizing it, because you may not be getting the results you think you are getting from your toothpaste. Here's the way to find out. Run the tip of your tongue over your teeth. You feel that filmy coating... That film on teeth collects stains, so no wonder your teeth look dingy. Better rush to your nearest drug counter and get a tube of Pepsodent toothpaste. Pepsodent contains a super-cleansing agent, Irium, that washes away the dingy coating from your teeth, makes them so clean they're shiny smooth to your tongue, brilliant and sparkling, and the cool, clean flavor of Pepsodent makes your mouth feel as fresh as a lake breeze. Tomorrow may be your big day. So, go to your drug counter tonight for a tube of Pepsodent toothpaste. And remember to take an empty metal tube with you. And now, let's get back to the date with Judy. We're almost home, Grandma. I always say, east, west, home's best. Certainly will be good to jump into a nice warm bath after that train trip. I never expected you back so soon, Dora. And Grandma here, too. Boy, was I tickled when I got your wire. Yep, here we are. All out. Oh, it's swell being home. Do you know what I'm looking forward to? Sleeping in that old four-poster bed that used to be Grandpa's and mine. I haven't slept in that bed for 20 years. Been missing it all this time. Sorry I ever gave it to you, Dora. Oh, Grandma. <laughs> now, you two are just going to take it nice and easy. It's going to be wonderful being in a house where there's some young people and some excitement once in a while. My house is so quiet and empty nowadays. <laughs> well, Grandma, there isn't anything very exciting. Melvin! What's the matter? I, I just... Melvin, where's the furniture? Gracious! It's gone! Everything's gone! For the love of heaven! There's not a stick of furniture in the house. Well, everything was here this morning when I left. Melvin, did you move into the Reynolds house while we were gone? Move? With you away? Do you think I'm crazy? Grandma, Mother. Hi, Grandma. Welcome home, Mother. Judy, Randolph, come and kiss Grandma. Judy, Randolph, have you two done anything that got anything to do with the bare condition of this house? Well, yes, it's part of a surprise. Surprise is putting it kind of mildly. Father, we moved. Moved. Now, you don't need to worry about a thing. We've got the new house all fixed up. The floors are all... Even painted. the fish are in the fish pond. Now, now, wait a minute. Let it leak out gradually. I don't think I can take it all in one solid hunk. Now, don't worry, Father. We've taken care of just positively everything. The lights are on and the telephone's in and the water's turned There's on. There's only one small item that's bothering us. What's that? Well, the furniture. What's wrong with it? It isn't there. It isn't there? No. Well, if it isn't there and if it isn't here, where is it? Well, when last seen, it was heading south on Maple Street. (laughs) What? But you don't need to worry about it, Father. Yeah, I'm sure it'll turn up one of these days. Don't drive so fast, Judy. Oh, be quiet, Dora. This is fun. I'm sorry, Mother. I'm just so anxious for all of you to see what our gang has done to the new house. I can hardly wait. What are we stopping here for? Well, because this is our new house. It most certainly is not. What? The old Reynolds place is three blocks down on the other side of the street. Would you mind saying that again, Father? I said this is not the house I bought. Are you sure, Father? Well, of course I'm sure. Gloomy, zoomy, this is grim. Judy... This isn't the house you wallpapered and got all fixed up, is it? Yes. Oh, for the love of heaven. Can't I turn my back for a minute without something terrible happening? All that energy gone to waste. Hours and hours. I hate to look, but we'd better go in and see what you did to this house. This is a mighty interesting situation. Let me help you out, Grandma. Help me nothing. I'm not so old I can't get out of a car myself. 
Judy, whatever made you think this was the house? Well, Father said it was a mansion on Maple Street. Mansion? It's a monstrosity. Well, they haven't been able to rent it for years. But look, there's a marble staircase and a fish pond. With fish? Are you sure you wouldn't rather live here? I'd just love to live here. I'd just be crazy to live here. Judy, will you please get it through your head? It isn't mine. You're darn right it isn't yours. Uh, Who said that? I did. May I ask what the devil you're doing on my property? Well, I'm very sorry, Mr. Buckley. Uh, uh, Buckley, yes, Mr. Buckley. My, my, my son and daughter just made a little mistake, that's all. I, uh, they, they thought this house was mine. And I suppose your son and daughter stuck striped wallpaper all over my walls and slopped cheap paint all over my floors. It's not cheap paint. It was very expensive. How expensive? Who paid for it? Why, you did, Father. We charge it to you, naturally. And the wallpaper, too, I suppose. Well, naturally. That's not the only thing you're going to pay for. Either you settle for the damage these kids have done, or you've got a lawsuit on your hands. Well, you don't have to scream, Buckley, even though this is your house. I can scream on my property any time I please. Then I can, too, if I have to pay damages for it. That's right, Melvin. Give it to him. Yeah. <laughs> Melvin, please, let's not have a fight. Father, you haven't got time to fight. You've got to try to find the furniture. Oh, the furniture. Yes, yes, all right. I'll, I'll call the movie company right away. Take your hands off that telephone. I'll not take my hands off the telephone. This is my house. And I say you can't use the telephone. My children happen to order this telephone, and I'm paying the bill. And I'll use it just as much as I please. Give it to him, Melvin. <laughs> Judy, what moving company was it? Well, Judy, I don't remember. <laughs> well, you, you've got to remember. We won't have a bed to sleep in tonight if you don't. Think, darling. All of a sudden, it slipped my mind. Randolph, do you remember? Judy, call him, not me. Good grief, the things that happened to me. I hope you can't find your furniture. That's a fine thing to say. Hello, information. Give me the numbers of every van and storage company in town. Griffin Storage? Did you have a load of furniture belonging to Melvin Foster? No, you don't. Thank you. Prospect moving? Do you have a load of furniture to be delivered to Maple Street? Oh, all they move is buildings. Elite moving? Hey, could you tell me if you have some furniture belonging to Melvin Foster? No, don't look at the dead storage. This furniture is very much alive. Yes, you do? Yes, that's my furniture, all right. All right, deliver it right away. Look, I, I don't care if the van is locked in the garage for the night. Unlock it. I want that furniture delivered right away. My goodness, I've had more excitement here in one day than I've had in Springfield in 20 years. Well, come on, everybody. Let's get out of here. It's about time. Now you can see the house that Melvin really bought, Grandma. Hey, hey, what do you know? I found it. Good heavens, who's that? Well, folks, it took me a long time that I found it. And who are you? It's the gas man. I finally found the meter. Guess where it was? I give up. Behind the bathtub. I never would have guessed it. Well, now the gas is all turned on. Well, that's just dandy. Because now you can go right back and turn it off again. Gee, this isn't much of a house, is it, Father? I'd like to know what's wrong with it. Well, it's not a mansion. There isn't even a marble staircase. And where'll I keep my guppies? You know, I think this house will look very nice with furniture. Where in the name of heaven is that furniture? You think they were bringing it in from the Canadian border? Grandma, this is a fine welcome for you. I'm terribly sorry. The first night you're here, we have to sit around on a bare hardwood floor all evening waiting for the furniture to come. <laughs> what time is it, Randolph? Wait a sec till I turn on my flashlight. Uh, it's almost midnight. Grandma, you shouldn't be up this late. Well, I haven't been for I don't know how long, but I like it. All I can think of about is, is how much this business is costing me. Surprise. Huh? Well, we were just trying to save you and Mother work. Will it be very expensive, Father? Expensive? Putting a telephone in, taking a telephone out. Turning the gas on, turning it off. Lights on, lights off. Our furniture going for a joyride all over the map. <laughs> This will cost me $75 if it costs me a penny. And heaven knows what damages I'll have to pay Buckley. He'll probably... Oh, that must be the moving men. Oh, thank heaven. Look here, Foster. What are you up to anyway? Oh, it's you, Buckley. You're darn right at me. And I want to know what's the idea of unloading a whole truckload of furniture into my house. For the love of heaven, did they deliver the furniture to your house? To the mansion? They did. 
And all I've got to say is, get that furniture out of my house before morning. How can I? Where will I get a moving van at this time of night? Well, Father, you've got a nice collection of telephone numbers. Thank goodness the furniture's in place. What time is it, somebody? When you hear the gong, it will be exactly 10 a.m. Imagine going to bed at 10 o'clock in the morning. Well, Grandma, you're all set. Good night now. Good night, children. My, this four-poster bed sure looks tempting. Uh... Good night, Grandma. Now go to bed, Randolph. Okay. Good morning. <laughs> Melvin, I wonder what our new neighbors think of us moving in at 6.30 in the morning. Oh, forget the neighbors, Dora. Oh, let's get some sleep. Mm. I was beginning to wonder if I'd ever see a bed again as long as I lived. Oh, sleep. Wonderful sleep. Oh, who the devil is that? Okay, okay, I'm coming. Who is it, Bobby? Imagine anybody ringing the doorbell at a time like this. Ten o'clock in the morning. Practically the middle of the night. Oh, Buckley, it's you again. Ah, good morning, Miss Foster. A beautiful day, isn't it? Now, what do you want? We finally got our furniture out of your tub. Who's complaining? Guess what? All right, I'll guess. A man came round to my house first thing this morning, wants to buy it. The mansion? Yep. Says he sees possibilities in it. Now that the floors are painted and the walls are papered. Of course, he'll have to do it over, but it gave him a good idea of what could be done with the place. (laughs) Well, blow me down. (laughs) Naturally, I feel I owe you something, so here's my check for $100 for all your trouble. Oh, it was no trouble at all. A hundred dollars. And to think Randolph and I earned it all ourselves. Hold on. Our date isn't over yet. We're going to interrupt the moving business to talk about the toothbrush business for a minute, that's all. You know, there's such a swing to the Pepsi and 50 tough toothbrush, I can only explain it in one way. A lot of folks must have been dissatisfied with their toothbrushes and just waiting for a brush like Pepsodent's. It's so different, it's patented, you know. There's not a scratchy bristle in that Pepsodent brush, and not a flabby, soggy one either. For Pepsodent uses slender nylon bristles that are gentle and yet stay springy and alive. Fifty tufts of gentle bristles united for super cleansing. It's a pleasure to brush your teeth with the Pepsodent brush. It's even a pleasure to buy it, because you get a bonus. When you open the package... Out pops a cash certificate worth 10 cents extra spending money. Be good to your family. Protect their smiles. Get Pepsodent 50 Tuck toothbrushes all around. You'll get a 10 cent cash certificate, a Pepsodent bonus with every brush. And now, back to Judy. I must say, this is the quickest moving we've ever done. Yes, Mother, and with the exception of the marble staircase and the fish pond and the elegance, I like this house as much as the mansion. Gee, Mother, where did Grandma disappear to all of a sudden? Why, she just went up to take a nice hot bath. Dora! Dora! Dora, I'm scared to pieces! Why, Grandma, what's the matter? Dora, there are guppies in the bathtub! <laughs> invited to have a date with Judy on Tuesday next, with Pepsodent as your chaperone. A Date with Judy with Deli Ellis and Dix Davis is written by Aline Leslie and Jerome Lawrence. Original music by Gordon Jenkins. Remember, for the safety of your smile, use Pepsodent twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. Larry Keating speaking. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company.